subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. What do we mean when we say being ripe for mischief? That is when life is going on placidly. You want some excitement. Everything is all right. Everything is settled, stable. You want some excitement. So you take a little panga here and there. Human beings do it at various points of time. Some people might do it during a midlife crisis. Some people might do it in the time of retirement. Some people might do it early enough in life thinking that this is the time when I can do something funny, adventurous and maybe uh, if I don't land on my feet, I can come back to where I was. So you can take pangas in life. But just because you think life is going on placidly, everything is cool and calm, there is no real excitement. So what do I do for excitement? Do you set your own house on fire? Now, if I told you that the Congress party is now showing an instinct, which is that when everything is going all right, my life is much too boring. So let me just set my own house on fire. Kya maza aega, right? So, all right. You set your own house on fire and say, fantastic. Neighbors, prosio, aake dekho, come and see. This house is burning. Take pictures. What a... What, what an interesting sight will make a great story. It doesn't matter if it's my house, but life was very boring for me and all of you. So I set my own house on fire. Then what happens? Then if the fire brigade is coming in, uh, because somebody calls the fire brigade to put out the fire, you also put blockades on the road so fire brigade can't reach. Then there is somebody right there in the house who's trying to put out the fire. You also start, you also have somebody who starts abusing him or her. So what do you call a party which is acting exactly like that currently in the state of Punjab? Because Punjab is a state that is going for elections next year. And it was seen that next year, the Congress party was actually the front runner because Ambami party had not found that much purchase in Punjab now. Also, BJP and Akali Dal had broken up. So with, without the alliance, Akali Dal can't win by itself. So it looked like it was a breeze for the Congress, which means for the Congress party, the life was too boring, right? And Congress party is no longer used to winning anything. Congress, Congress party is very used to losing one thing after the other. So this was looking too boring. So they thought they'll make it a little exciting, right? In that process, the high command in Delhi began lending its ear to Indian politics' superstar court jester. Uh, and I say that seriously. That is Navjot Singh Sidhu. Because what is Navjot Singh Sidhu? Till 2017, he was in the BJP for more than a decade. He is a, he is a congi come lately, if I might use that expression. He just came to, to the Congress less than four years ago. And he also let Everybody believe all this while that if he wasn't given what he wanted, which essentially was the chief minister's chair, uh, he will go to Aam Aadmi Party. Not as if Aam Aadmi Party ever invited him. And frankly, I'd like to see him join Aam Aadmi Party. And I'll, I'd like to see how Arvind Kejriwal and Aam Aadmi Party are able to deal with somebody like him. Now, Congress Party, one, because they were impatient with Amrinder, because Amrinder is a very grown-up person. I deliberately avoid using the word old for him, or although he's among the oldest politicians in power in India right now, probably the oldest. I just have to think, I can't think immediately uh, on my backside, as I say, maybe if I was on feet, on my feet, I would have run my eye over the country. But I think he is probably the oldest politician with power in India right now. He also won his election himself, which is unusual for the Congress party. He also isn't somebody who is constantly playing court jester to the Congress high command. He has, a, he has a direct equation with Sonia Gandhi. He was a friend of Rajiv Gandhi. So all those things don't always work in his favor. Also, he has a standoffish style. He sometimes is available, sometimes is not available. And his government has also uh, not done several things right or not done several things. In the process, some anti-incumbency is built up. But at the same time, Congress was not looking for an alternative to him. Uh, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi were not looking for an alternative for, for him. Maybe they were looking for somebody just to needle him a little. 
Now, do you needle your own chief minister who won the last election for you and who is the only one who is likely to win you the next election just months before the next election? So that is what I mean by setting your own house on fire because life is too boring. Then setting your own house on fire and putting who in charge? Putting as your housekeeper somebody who is who also wants his house to house to be set in fire on fire because he does not like one of the residents in the building and one of the key residents in the building that is the chief minister of Punjab. So you set your own government in Punjab on fire and you put Navjot Singh Sidhu as the head of the party in Punjab, right? And then you have the fire brigade, which is Harish Rawat, who is this, who is the Congress party high commands uh, prabhari or in charge for Punjab. He is somebody who's obviously until this morning had not got a clear signal. So he was letting this fester. The fast a fire was going on. So even while you had the fire brigade, you had blockaded the fire brigade's way. So this house was burning beautifully and everybody was having fun at your expense. So what happened over the last couple of days? Over the last couple of days, first Amritnar Singh issued a strong statement objecting to some statements by two of the four advisors of Navjot Singh Sidhu. Now, Navjot Singh Sidhu, uh, as he became PCC president, uh, appointed four advisors. Four advisors are not, uh, not politicians. Uh, two of them happen to be old mavericks, maybe well-meaning people, but essentially dissidents and mavericks. In fact, in terms of personality, they sound much more like the original Aam Aadmi Party people who might have a problem with everything, who are generally personally honest, but who also don't care very much about what they are talking about. And in some ways also are a little bit of headline hunters. So two of these advisors, Malvinder Singh Mali and Dr. Pyarilal Garg, they said some things uh, which suddenly hit headlines. And it's not as if something old was pulled out to hit headlines. On 17th of August, which was just the other day, Malvinder Singh Mali put a Facebook post uh, where he said he talked about Kashmir. And he said, what is happening in Kashmir? Uh, he said it's like an open air jail. And he said, uh, he said Kashmir belongs to Kashmiri people. India and Pakistan have gone against UN resolutions by illegally capturing Kashmir. And then he goes on to say, why after sending millions of soldiers JNK has been converted into an open jail. Now, somebody can have that point of view. It's all right. Uh, that is a different argument and we'll argue with that. But can the advisor of the PCC president in Punjab, when Congress party is the ruling party, can its party president's advisor have this view now? It's not a view he had in the past. He has a controversial past. In fact, in the past, in 1993, he's also been arrested under NSA, National Security Act, and TADA, which used to be the earlier avatar of UAPA, tougher than UAPA in some ways. He was arrested under both for his provocative writings. He's been very close. Uh, he's worked very closely, uh, like a secretary or like a PRO, with Gurcharan Singh Tora, who used to be the head of Shirumani Gurdwara Prabandak Committee, and who generally presided over... Uh, this sort of the destruction of the institutional destruction of SGPC at a time when Bhindra Wale was rising and he lost control of the main Gurdwara, uh, the Vatican of the Six, that is the Golden Temple. And I do remember as journalists, when we were covering the Punjab situation, it is as if Foxy was Gurcharan Singh Tora's title. So it was always the Foxy Gurcharan Singh Tora. So Mali used to work with him. After that, sure enough, he's worked with Nabrinder Singh also between 2002 and 2007. He's an educationist. He's, a, he's been a good social sciences teacher, uh, but always a maverick and always a dissident. Now, Sidhu found him. He's not a Congress person. He's not a Congress leader, Congress worker, nothing. But he's a maverick who Sidhu collected around him. Dr. Pyarelal Garg, again, used to be a doctor. And he did a lot of work on, on the gender balance or the female feticide business in Punjab. So again, uh, again, a good person, uh, an activist, but not a politician and not a pol political being. So what did he say? 
he said that Amrinder Singh is overdoing this criticism of Pakistan. He should stop it because this will not be in interest of Punjab. Now, I mean, okay, you can have that point of view and a lot of people in Punjab might say, and a lot of them say that Punjab on both sides should trade with each other, that Punjab on both sides suffers, that is a divided Punjab, suffers because of the India-Pakistan tensions. That is an arguable point. But for somebody who is a formal advisor to the ruling party's party chief saying this at this time is quite problematic for the Congress party. I don't have a problem. It's problematic for the Congress party. That's the reason I used such extreme examples to say set your house on fire, block the fire brigade and put in charge of uh, putting out the fire, somebody who's quite happy to see the house on fire. That's exactly what's happened. After that, what happened was 34 MLAs got together. 34 MLAs got together and they said, we've lost confidence in the chief minister and chief minister should be changed. Now, it's a matter of a few months before the code of conduct will be announced. Election will be early next year. Now, at this point, does anybody change their chief minister? BJP did, of course, in Uttarakhand. But one, because they had a peculiar problem, that chief minister they had appointed there had not won an election. He was unelected. So either they would have had to hold a by-election so close to many elections or change the chief minister. Also, frankly, BJP can afford to do silly things because they are winning all the time. Congress party is not winning all the time. So the odd place where they have won and where they have the likelihood of winning again, they start playing games there itself. Now, so these 34 said that chief minister must go. We can't work under him. They collected at the house of a dissident MLA called Tript Rajinder Singh Bajwa. And they said, we want change. Now, 34, you might say in a small state like Punjab, 34 is a lot of numbers. So understand the numbers. Punjab has a house of 117, 117. Punjab is one of the smallest states in India. Punjab and Assam are about the same sized states. 117. The Congress party now has 80 MLAs there. 8-0. So even if 34 go, uh, 34 stand aside, there is still 46. It's still a very large uh, number. And by the end of the day, several of these people then started betting on the other side also. Now, this is these are things that happen when your party's government is there. And a, and a bigger party outside like the BJP is trying to break it. But in this case, once again, you are breaking your own party. That's the reason I said you are, you've set fire to your own house. Right. And now you are saying, bachao, bachao, bachao. I've set fire to my own house. I have not let anybody put out the fire. Come and save me. Now, what has happened is that once this went out of control, now some of these MLAs and four ministers in Amrinder Singh's cabinet. They went and met also. They claimed that they met Harish Rawat, former chief minister of Uttarakhand, who is the party's head, a party's in charge for Punjab. They met him and this news also spread. So once again, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi have been repeatedly meeting Sidhu. Sidhu has rarely been saying anything kind about Amrinder Singh. He's been talking in his own way. Amrinder Singh has been isolated. Amrinder Singh has been coming and meeting Sonia Gandhi instead. Now, in that situation, in a high commander and party, a mood builds up that there is Amrinder Singh is in bad order. He is now spoiled goods. Now, Sidhu is the man of the future. So, that confusion that led to this festering this far until the party high command, such as it is, realized that they had let it go too far. So, this morning, Harish Rawat issued a statement that next election will be held under the leadership of Amrinder Singh. So that effectively uh, squashes uh, Sidhu's, uh, Sidhu's uh, interest right now. How he will behave, we don't know because chances are that Sidhu will continue to be Sidhu. And that is what Amrinder Singh and his supporters had said <clears throat> when he had charmed the party high command so much in Delhi. Uh, the combination of psychophancy, chugal khori, uh, tail carrying or whatever you say, uh, that, that Amrinder decided not to object or not to make it a make or break issue or deal breaker to say that if you make 
Sidhu the party chief, then I will resign. He didn't do it because he knew that Sidhu ultimately, one, doesn't carry so much weight. And second, uh, given the way he runs his politics, he will create such a complication at some point that the party itself will realize that they have created trouble for themselves. That is precisely what's happened in Punjab right now. Now, can the party handle it? I don't know. Will he tell, uh, will Sidhu tell these advisors to go? It doesn't look like that because his advisors are saying what we have said is not anti-national. What's your problem? The fact is, that Mr. Mali's, if you go to his Facebook page, he also has something about Indira Gandhi there. In fact, his display picture there is Indira Gandhi standing, standing next to a heap of skulls, a tiny skull mountain with a gun, with a rifle, with a human skull hanging on to it. This is a reference to 1984. Now, again, okay, you have that point of view, you have that point of view, but can you then be formally an advisor of the Pradesh Congress Committee president? And think about it, that PCC president has been appointed by the grandchildren of the same Indira Gandhi. Now, either Indian politics has become so hyper-liberal and so woke that they don't belong in Delhi, they belong in Manhattan. Right? or some place like that, uh, maybe AOC has taken over the Congress party. But they haven't because the issue between the BJP and the rest is nationalism right now. And again, for someone else to say that you are criticizing Pakistan too much, you don't do it, it will not be good for Punjab. Once again, is playing right into the BJP's hands for the Congress party, not just in Punjab, but everywhere, now these statements will be used by BJP, not just in Punjab. In Punjab, BJP will not make much difference, right? They will not get very far, but they will use this in Uttar Pradesh and elsewhere. And they will say, unless you have us in power, you, have, you will have all these anti-national separatist elements in power. Because you can't say this is somebody's personal view, because he is the advisor of the PCC president in a very important sensitive state. So that is where we are in the process. In politics now tells us that Abhinder Singh has made a slight recovery to the extent that Sidhu has now embarrassed himself so much, I think he's overplayed his hand, that is the analytical point with a little opinion, that the party itself is embarrassed and, and worried. And that's why this statement from Harish Rawat. The other thing that's happened is, again, a very interesting pointer from Punjab. Yesterday, Amrinder Singh upped the sugar, co sugar cane uh, price for the farmers to 360 rupees. Center has today taken it up by 5 rupees from 292 to 295. Amrinder yesterday took it to 360. After that, it was welcomed by farmers and many farm leaders, including Balbir Singh Rajewal, who is the leader of one of the large factions of protesting farmers. In fact, that group went to Amrinder Singh and fed him Mithai. You can see those pictures. Uh, also, those pictures are shared by Amrinder Singh's media advisor. So you can see that even the farmers are leaning on that side. And that is how the Congress party is probably trying to do repair work. But that repair work is maybe, I don't know whether it's still in time or maybe it's too late. Uh, and maybe the Congress party in Punjab uh, already is a bit like Indian cricket team today in the first innings at Leeds at Headingley. When I started recording this, I think they were eight down, uh, around 80 or something. So in this case, uh, I don't know what happens to the playground. Bowlers do something. In this case, the bowlers have done nothing. This is hit wicket, hit wicket, hit wicket, hit wicket. So everything in the Congress party right now in Punjab is hit wicket. Now, having said that, one little story I will tell you. You've been seeing uh, these stories coming out of Afghanistan where the Taliban leaders are now saying, Zabiullah Mujahid, the Taliban spokesman also, that look, we will let anybody who has a foreign passport leave the country, but anybody who has an, who's an Afghan, we will not let them leave the country because we don't want them leaving the country. Now, you will say, can a country stop people from leaving? Right? A country may stop people from coming in. Can a visa nahi hai, illegal immigrant. Can a country leave, stop people from leaving? Now, I just want to tell you because... I suspect most of you, because most of you are young, most of you will not know that there was a time in our lifetime, just until about 20 years back, when Cold War was on, that in many countries, even a foreigner, even when the foreigner had a visa, went to their country, 
even to return had to take a visa. So you had to have a visa for going into the country. You also needed a visa to go back home from that country. And that visa was called exit visa. So all the Soviet bloc countries, all the communist countries and many other countries had that problem or that challenge. And look, I'll tell you, I was a young reporter until 1990. 1990 it began to change I think exit visa stopped after 91 92 but even then I was quite reckless uh, and I thought I was indestructible but even then when you went to a place which had the exit visa role until the last day you had that concern at the back of your head will these fellows let me go back or not and that was the idea that people who come in should also know that they can stop me so they'll be on their best behavior and the last day, day before leaving, when you went to the Ministry of Interior there and gave your passport to say exit visa, for a moment your heart missed a beat. That suppose this guy says no. So I, I thought you guys will not believe me. So I will show you something. This is from an old passport and this is February 1991. Uh, you will see it on my screen also. This is an exit visa from government of Afghanistan. That means I can leave their country and this is what we used to get from a lot of these countries and you always always uh, worried about it also because I'm taking you so far back 20 years I will also to remind you what used to happen when we travel overseas even small things like cam a tiny camera or or like a laptop ancient laptops a Toshiba T1000 those were entered in your passport by customs so when you were coming back nobody will accuse you of smuggling so think about this is 91 so think about how much india has moved since 1991 and how much the world has moved since 90, 1991 when you don't need exit visas anymore i don't know what the rules in north korea are these days but mostly this business has now gone out